our first question for you would be, where were you at when you were a kid and, and trying to figure out what you liked? Um, when I was young, all I wanted to do was join the Navy. And then when I was about 16, I found out that I was colorblind and the Navy wouldn't take me. And then I was flailing around a little bit, like, what am I going to do? I don't know. I like ships. And I ended up going to study naval architecture and shipbuilding. I got uh, an offer to come to Florida to, to study there in, in ocean engineering, in submarine design and submarine building. And that was where it sort of then my interest took off. But how I ended up getting to where I am now in, in surfing, which you can see there's this sort of progression and, and everything sort of has a, a clear link between where it starts and where it ends. Um, I was learning how to build a specific set of maps for the Navy to figure out whether their ships are going to be able to get through a storm or not. You know, how big are the waves going to be in two days' time out in the middle of the Pacific? And it turned out that my students started using that to figure out when to go surfing. <laughs> and I ended up doing this website on the side. It was just a sort of a hobby and a little way to make a little extra money and never realizing that it would take off. Um, it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until this company said, we'd like you to uh, move to California and join the surf world and surf. Oh. And here I am. And I, I've been here now for 12 years, something like that, 10 or 12 years. How do you, like, I think for us, it's like everyone is expecting for you to have a plan. I don't know, like dictated when once you get a certain education that you need to find a real job. And we're so stressed out that we don't have a plan yet. Um, how, how do you go about it? Like, you know, I was in academia. I was, on, I was in that track. So when I did make that decision to leave, there were some people that were shocked. And also people thought it was a waste of a PhD. You know, it's like you're taking this, this pinnacle of science and engineering and you're going to go waste it on a bunch of guys who just hang out at the beach all day long. Um, and there was a little part of me that thought the same thing as well. You know, that yeah. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm Dr. Ray, I shouldn't be doing this. But when you actually see what we do here, it is as technologically advanced, if not more so, than anybody else doing the same work. Our models are better than a lot of government agencies. And even though my original aim was to join the Navy, I ended up not feeling all that comfortable with the fact that a lot of the research I was doing was effectively weapon systems. But now what I do is people get up in the morning and they can say, should I go surfing today or not? And they can look at what we make and go, yeah, I'm going to go surf. And then, put smiles on people's faces. You know, and I, I think I could probably earn a, a lot more money doing a different job if I wanted to. But you, I wear a t-shirt to work. You, know? <laughs> you can assign some sort of dollar value to that, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it says a lot. Yeah. It um, seems like you're able to take any situation and, and not just make the best of it, but also make it feel productive and, and it, keep interested. And that's yeah. really impressive. I yeah, I've, I've been, I think I've always been busy. I hate not doing anything. Even down to the, even down to just being at home. I can't sit with a pile of dishes or the laundry not done or stuff like that. It's like if there's something that needs to be done, I, I will go and do it and take care of it. And then that means that if those things are done, this is going to get into some sort of crazy metaphor stuff now, right? Yeah, uh, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> if, if those little things are done, they're not weighing on your mind. So now your mind is free to think about the next big things, you know, like yeah. clean out all the crap yeah. and focus on the good stuff that's left. Maybe that's, that's a, a key thing. <laughs> do the dishes. <laughs> yeah, do the dishes. That's really great advice, though. <laughs> so as you're going along in life, how did you make that distinction between following this curiosity and this passion and balancing it with, well, you know, I have to make a career out of this and things like that? I know this is going to sound odd, but I'm still almost waiting for when I'm going to grow up. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's I, I, you know, I look at myself now and... Working here at Surfline, I, I guess I have a career at Surfline. It doesn't feel like it. I, I feel, I just I enjoy what I do so much. But maybe that's just the way I deal with things is it's much more 
I create the environment where something is going to happen for me. Mm. And How? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do uh, that. <laughs> um, I guess what, what I've done is everything I've done, I've tried to do the best I can. I think that passion comes through. And people realize that. I'm a self-taught programmer, so I'm not formally trained in writing surf forecasting software. I think I always did is I stuck with it and I just I held out the hope. I'm, a, I'm an incredibly optimistic person. That's always paid off. You know, just hoping and hoping and hoping that the right thing will happen. It kind of does, or something better will come along, or something different, and then you just sort of tack a little bit one way or the other, and you end up where you want to be, and maybe you just haven't figured out which, which little road you're going to take or whatever, but I don't think it matters which one you take, honestly, because they'll all end up being the right one.